Once upon a time in a country not so far from here, there lived King Hans and his wife, Queen Margaret. They had two daughters, Kirsten and Marie. The younger daughter, Marie, was very beautiful, and she was the pride and joy of her parent. The older daughter, Kirsten, as well, not quite so beautiful, and although the king and queen did not mistreat her, they were not very kind to her either. Really, my dear Hans, I wish you learned to read. That's my phone you were sitting on. Can't you even tell the difference between K and Q? I think you need to go back to phonics. Oh, sorry, dear. I was never good at minding my K's and Q's. Good morning, mother. Good morning, father. Good morning, Kirsten. Good morning. What are you doing today, dear? I thought I might do some gardening. That sounds nice. What were you thinking of doing? I was thinking that the borders in the wood. Good morning, mother. Good morning, father. I'm so excited to go hunting today. Good morning, Marie. Ah, oh, yes, of course. We'll set off very soon. Don't be late. Of course not, father. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Wait, you're going hunting? Why didn't you tell me? We didn't think you would be interested. We didn't think you'd want to come. You always do this. You always organize things without me. That's not fair. We were trying to think of you. You should have just asked me. Well, you've never come hunting with us before. You never asked. So, do you want to come this time? Yes. Mother, does she have to come with us? If she must come, I don't see why she shouldn't. Very well, Kirsten. You may come with us. Let's all go and get ready. Guard? Yes. Yes, sir. Prepare the horses and dogs for hunting, please, George. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. We should get ready, too. Come along, my dear Marie. Poor Kirsten. It wasn't her fault. Her parents were unkind and all because of the way she looked. She was at least excited to go hunting them with them this time she liked exploring in the forest but she didn't get to go out there very often marie on the other hand was grumpy she was used to being her parents favorite and didn't see why she had to share the expedition with her sister once everyone was ready they got onto their horses and rode out into the forest as they went the paths got narrower and narrower eventually they decided to go down and go on foot We've been walking for ages. My feet are so tired. Oh, you poor baby. Sit down and rest. There, there, baby. It's okay. Rest your feet. It's been ten minutes. How can you already be tired? That's enough. Stop bickering. Kirsten, why don't you go and look for some rabbits to hunt? Maybe over there. That way you and your sister won't argue. Ugh, fine. Mother, my feet hurt so much. I want to go home. But you were so excited to come hunting, and now you want to go home? I want to go home. Well then, we must go home straight away. But I was enjoying hunting. Dear, Marie Sviha, you surely can't expect to stay when she's in so much pain? Well, of course not, but... Well then, that's sorted. Father, there's a rabbit here. Oh yes, I had forgotten about Kirsten. Coming! Hunt! Marie needs your help. She can't get back to the horses alone. But what about my hunting trip? Father, my feet hurt. You see, we need to go now. Kirsten, Kirsten, we're going home. Do you think she heard me? Never mind. It doesn't matter. She'll be fine. She'll work it out. She can walk home if she has to. That will serve her right for making fun of my poor feet. Ow! Really? Well, if you insist. But Kirsten didn't return back to the palace that night, nor the next, nor the next. King Hans and Queen Margaret sent out a search party, and although the search party had a quick look, they did not look for her very thoroughly. In the end, the king said to the queen, well, perhaps she's gone to live somewhere else. She'll probably be all right. 
And so after that, King Hans and Queen Margaret and Princess Marie lived as a family all free without Princess Kirsten. Every so often, the Queen would wonder what had happened to her older, less beautiful daughter Kirsten. But as time went by, this happened less and less until she barely thought about her about Kirsten at all. Have you seen Marie this morning? It's nearly eleven o'clock. She's being very lazy. Well, she was on a date last night with a handsome Baron Muckraker. Perhaps she's got home very late. Muckraker, isn't he the one whose father owns a newspaper? Yes, that's home. Um, I hope it went well. He's fabulously rich, and she married him. I'm sure there'd be lots of lovely articles about her. Hmm. I don't trust the media. I get all my news on Twitter anyway, or X, or whatever it's called this week. Don't be silly. It's terribly important that Marie find someone of high stature to marry, and soon, <sighs> if you say so, dear. <sighs> there you are, Marie. And how was your date last night with Baron Muckraker? Oh, mother, I'm so tired. He just kept talking and talking. It took me hours to get away. Did he say anything interesting? No, he was awful. Absolutely awful. All he could talk about was money and football. He went on about Leicester City and about how much money he was going to make betting on them going back up to the Premiership, whatever that means. Well, in any case, it was very bad taste for him to mention Leicester at all after the unpleasantness a couple of years ago with the remains of your uncle Richard being found under that car park. Alas, poor Richard! I knew him well. What do you mean, alas, poor Richard? You knew him well. Of course, you knew him well. He was your brother, and I don't remember you seeing alas when you had him buried in concrete under the car park. Oh, mother! Stop bickering with father. Just concentrate on me. How am I ever going to find someone worth marrying? Come in. Yes, George. What is it? Sire, there's an old hag at the gate to see you. Why would I want to see an old hag, George? Send her away. Y yes, sir. A hag indeed. These door-to-door -door peddlers are getting completely out of hand. Probably someone from the council checking that we have a TV license. Dreadful, simply dreadful. Yes, come in. Yes, George, what is it now? Sire, the hag won't go away. She insists on seeing you. Which part of send her away didn't you understand? Why would I want to see an old hag? Send her away, I tell you. Send her away. Sir, the old hag, sir, she won't go away. She says she's a fortune teller and that she has a message from you from, be the, from beyond the beyond. A message from beyond the beyond? Well, that is different. I always like to know what is going on beyond the beyond. And even Twitter misses things sometimes. Perhaps I can tweet it and go viral. Bring her to me. Yes, sir. Beyond the beyond? I've only ever heard of the beyond until now. Clearly, I've been missing out. I wouldn't trust anything she says. She's probably trying to scam you. Here she is, sir. The hack, sir. I see. Thank you, God. You may go. Now tell me, old lady, what do you want? Do you have a message for me? Your Majesty, if you will permit me. Crystal ball, crystal ball, appear to me in this great hall, so that with a magic spell, I the future can foretell. Now, what do I see? What do I see? Ah! Things are beginning to become clear. Yes, yes. I see a daughter, a princess. Do you have a daughter? She will meet someone and fall in love. Yes, she will meet someone and fall in love. When you die, her fiancé will become king. Yes, yes. Perfect. Thank you, old woman. Thank you, old woman. But what do I see? What do I see? Aha, uh -huh. her husband will be a soldier. A poor soldier at that. Not a noble or a prince. Just a poor soldier. The next king of this land will be a poor soldier. A poor soldier? Did you say a poor soldier? 
This is an outrage. My daughter shall not marry a soldier, never mind a poor soldier. She shall marry a nobleman or a prince. Do not contradict what the crystal ball says, your majesty. Your daughter shall marry a poor soldier. Never, never, never. I forbid it. She shall marry the man of my choice, and I'd rather die than have her marry a poor soldier. Get out of my sight. God, God, take this woman away, throw her out of the castle, and never ever let her near me again. Quite right. Yes, sir. Outrageous. Poor soldier indeed. I shall not have it. And to make sure that this never happens, Marie, you are to be locked up in the highest and furthest tower of this castle, never to come out until you have found a suitable husband for you, a nobleman or a prince. Poor soldier indeed. But father, I don't go on dates with poor soldiers. From now on, you're not going on dates with anyone at all. Who knows whom else you might meet? You're staying here, and your mother and I will vet prospective husbands for you. If they're royal, rich, and loyal, then we'll let you see them. <laughs> and stop sniveling. It's for the good of the whole country. Imagine a poor soldier becoming king. And so Marie was locked up in the highest and furthest tower of this castle and she was forbidden to see anyone other than the rich princess who might be seeking her hand. Thus the king and queen never saw either of their daughters anymore, cursed them because she had disappeared on the hunting expedition, and now Marie because she was locked up until a suitable suitor could be found. Some days later, two soldiers came marching along the high road. They had knapsacks on their backs and swords at their sides, They've been to wars and were now returning home. Left, right, left, right. Hey Anders, this is a nice stop. Spot, let's stop for a rest. We've been away so long, I can't wait to get home. Marching home is so tiring though, I just need a quick break. Oh, just a short one then. And look, an old well, maybe it's a wishing well. I'll make a wish, a wish that I could be home instantly. Nope, I'm still here. Oh, well, maybe it's not wishing well. Oh, what a scary-looking old lady. Everything about her is ugly. I've got shivers all up and down my spine. Good evening, soldiers. Good evening, old lady. I see that you have very fine swords and large knapsacks. I am sure that you have fought very hard in the wars, and it is now time for you to have your reward. You shall become rich beyond your wildest dreams. Um, thank you. That is indeed wonderful news. Did you understand anything she just said? No, she must be crazy. Do you see that well? It is very old and no longer has any water in it. You must go down the well in the bucket, collect your reward, and when you call out to me, I shall pull you out. Go down the well in the bucket and you'll pull me out? You must be joking. I am not joking at all. Do you want to be rich beyond your wildest dreams? Yes or no? Of course I want to be rich, but going down the well? What am I supposed to do down there? down the well get the money for when you get down to the bottom of the well you will discover that you are in a large chamber and you will find a cupboard the money is in the cupboard all you need to do is open the cupboard doors and the money will be yours a cupboard at the bottom of the well you must be mad i just open the cupboard doors and the money will be mine yes just open the cupboard doors and the money will be yours well almost there could be one small problem sometimes a dog protects the door and he may not be very friendly I have put a comb in the bucket to protect you. The dog likes to have his fur combed. That will calm him down. This is not a bad story, but what am I to give you in return? You don't mean to tell me that I can have all the money for nothing? Are you actually going to go down there? You must be mad too. No, that is true. You cannot have the money for nothing, but I do not ask for a single penny. You only have to promise to bring me up an old tinderbox, which my grandmother left behind last time she went down there. An old tinderbox? That is all you want? A tinder box. Just a tinder box. Oh, where shall I find this tinder box? That I do not know. All I know is that it is down there somewhere at the bottom of the well. Very well, old lady. I promise. I will get you the tinder box. You're really going? Yes, Christian, I am. And if you stay here with this old lady, I'm sure no harm will come to me. I still think you're crazy, but if you insist...
And so, without further ado, Anders got into the bucket and let the old witch lower him into the well. Now it turned out that the well was very deep, very deep indeed. And for a while, Anders began to wonder whether the well had a bottom at all. Down and down he went, lower and lower and lower, and so far down in fact that it began to get very dark and very cold. Eventually, however, a light could be seen below and before. Much longer, Anders found himself at the bottom of the well. Well, the old hag was right. Here I am at the bottom of the well. There is the dog, and there is a cupboard in which must be the money. Perhaps if I'm quiet enough, I can open the door without even waking the dog. Here, doggy, doggy, doggy. Nice doggy. Calm down. Well, this is a fine situation. Clearly, those are the cupboard doors behind which I'll find the money. But how am I meant to get past the dog? Here, doggy, doggy, doggy. Nice doggy. Calm down, little doggy. The old hag must be mad. She sent me down here to get eaten by the dog. This is a trick. At least Christian is guarding my knapsack and sword. On the other hand, perhaps I'm not trying hard enough to calm the dog. I'll try once more before giving up. Nice doggy. It's no use. I'm going back up. Hello, are you there? Call me up. I can't get past the dog. You found the dog? Is there any money? What do you mean you can't get past the dog? Yes, I found the dog, but I can't get past him. He snarls at me every time I approach him. Did you try combing his fur? No, of course I didn't try combing his fur. Why don't you come down here and try to comb his fur? Every time I get anywhere close to him, he lunges at me and snarls. I could not possibly get close enough to him to comb his fur without him having my arm for lunch. Well, it seems that you are not brave enough to deserve the money. Never mind then. Just get into the bucket and I'll haul you back up. What did you say? She said, it seems I'm not brave enough to deserve the money. Just get into the bucket and she'll haul you back up. Not brave enough? You heard him, not brave enough. Now get into the bucket and I'll haul you up. Hey, I am a soldier. I have fought in dozens of battles. I've never been told I wasn't brave enough for something before. I'll try once more with the comb. There is no comb in here. Old witch, are you there? What comb? There is no comb in the bucket. Ah, I must have forgotten it. I will throw it down the well. Stand aside, lest it hit you. This is amazing. Christian, the comb turned into a fence, and now the dog can't get me. What kind of witch are you? Wow, so much bronze. The old woman wasn't joking. There's more bronze here than I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to fill the bucket with it. Right, that should be enough. Old woman, I'm ready. Haul me up. Hello, Christian, I'm ready. Haul me up. Is anyone there? Haul me up. I am here, but with all that bronze, the bucket is awfully heavy. Well, it seems to me that you're not strong enough to lift a flea. What? I've never been told I wasn't strong enough to lift a flea. She's going for it, Anders. She's really working hard now. Come on, old lady. That's it, old lady. Just keep going. The old lady complained bitterly about the weight. She tugged and she tugged on the handle, forcing it round and round. Several times she slipped and Anders found himself suddenly going down instead of up. Eventually, panting very heavily, she succeeded in getting Anders back to the surface. Well, old witch, you were right. There was a dog in front of a cupboard, but the comb protected me from the dog. And when I got the doors open, there was more bronze in there than I could possibly bring back to the surface. I'm most grateful for this money. And if it's quite all right with you, I'll be on my way. Not so fast, my lad. Not so fast. Where is the tinderbox? The tinderbox? Yes, the tinderbox. Ah, the tinderbox. Well, in fact, I was so scared of the dog and then so amazed to see all the money behind the door that I must admit I forgot all about the tinderbox. Well, you are hardly going to go home with all that money unless I have my tinderbox. All right, I'll go back down the well and get your tinderbox. But please, 
Do you have another comb so I don't get attacked by the dog? No, I do not have another comb. But I have put an old bird in the bucket which you can give the dog. He is usually hungry and that will calm him down. Good luck. Don't get eaten by the dog. I want to get home. And so without further ado, Anna's got into the bucket and let the old witch lure him into the well. Now, as we already know, the well was very deep, very deep indeed. And once again, Anna's begun to wonder whether it had a bottom at all. Down and down he went, lower and lower and lower. So far down, in fact, that it began to get very dark and very cold. Eventually, however, a light could be seen below. And before much longer, Anders found himself at the bottom of the well. Well, the old hag was right. Here I am, back at the bottom of the well. There is the dog, though bigger than the last one. And there is a cupboard in which must be more money, and perhaps the tinderbox. Perhaps this time, if I'm quiet enough, I can open it without even waking the dog. Here, doggy, doggy, doggy. Nice doggy. Calm down. <laughs> well, this is a fine situation. <laughs> Clearly, those are the doors behind which I'll find the money and the tinder box. But how am I meant to get past the dog? Here, doggy, doggy, doggy. Nice doggy. Calm down, little doggy. <laughs> the old hag must be mad. She sent me down here to get eaten by the dog. This is a trick. At least Christian is guarding my knapsack and sword and all the bronze, unless he's stolen it and run away home. On the other hand, perhaps I'm not trying hard enough to calm the dog. I'll try once more before giving up. It's no use. I'm going back up. Old woman, haul me up. I can't get past the dog. What do you mean you can't get past the dog? I can't get past the dog. He snarls at me every time I approach him. Did you try giving him the bone? No, of course I didn't try giving him the bone. Why don't you come down here and try giving him the bone? Every time I get anywhere close to him, he lunges at me and snarls. I could not possibly get close enough to him to give him the bone without him having my arm for lunch. Well, it seems that you are not brave enough to deserve the money. Never mind then. Just get into the bucket and I'll haul you back up. What did you say? She said, it seems that you're not brave enough to deserve the money. Just get into the bucket and she'll haul you back up. Not brave enough? You heard me. Not brave enough. Now get into the bucket and I'll haul you up. Hey, I am a soldier. I have fought in hundreds of battles. I've never been told I wasn't brave enough for something before. I'll try once more with the bone. There is no bone in here. Old witch, what bone? There is no bone in the bucket. Ah, oh, I must have forgotten it. I will throw it down the well. Stand aside lest it hit you. Well, this is truly amazing. The old woman wasn't joking. There's more silver here than I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to fill the bucket with it. Oh dear, only have a few minutes before the dog finishes that bone. I must hurry. There, doggy, doggy, doggy. Nice doggy. Calm down, little doggy. Old woman, I'm ready. Haul me up. What did you say? Haul me up, you old goat. I'm ready to come up to the surface. You didn't say please. Oh, come on. The dog's about to eat him. Okay, okay. Please haul me up out of the well. The old lady started winding the bucket up, but it was hard work, hard work because Anders had put so many coins in the bucket and she complained bitterly about the way. She tugged and she tugged on the handle, forcing it round and round. Several times she slipped and Anders found himself suddenly going down instead of up. Eventually, panting very heavily, she succeeded in getting him back back to the surface. Well, old witch, you were right. There was a dog in front of a cupboard, but he calmed down when I gave him the bone. And when I got the door open, there was more silver in there than I could possibly bring back to the surface. I'm most grateful for this money, and if it's quite all right with you, I'll be on my way.
Where is the tinder box? The tinder box? Yes, the tinder box. Ah, the tinder box. Well, in fact, I was so scared that the dog might finish the bone, and then so amazed to see all the silver money behind the door, that I must admit I forgot all about the tinder box. Anders, come on! I want to go home! Well, you are truly a double idiot. You are hardly going to be going home with all that money unless I have my tinder box. All right, all right. I'll go back down the well and get your tinder box. But please, do you have another bone so I don't get attacked by the dog? No, I do not have another bone. But I do have an old penny flute which you can use to soothe the dog. As soon as you start playing, he will go to sleep. But mind that you don't stop playing until you have the tinder box. Otherwise, he will cut you to pieces in the blink of an eye. He is usually very hungry. Don't forget the tinder box. And so, without further ado, Anders got into the bucket and let the old witch lower him into the well. And for the third time, he began to wonder whether the well had a bottom at all. Down and down, he went lower and lower and lower. So far down, in fact, that it began to get very, very dark and very cold. Eventually, however, light could be seen below and before. Much longer, and he found himself at the bottom of the well. Well, the old hag was right. Here I am, back at the bottom of the well. There is the dog, though even bigger than the last one. And there is a cupboard, which must be the tinder box. Perhaps if I'm quiet enough, I can open it without even waking the dog. Nice doggy, there, there. Forget it. This dog is simply too huge. I can't possibly get past him. Hold me up to the surface, old lady. What do you mean you can't get past the dog? I can't get past the dog. He snarls at me every time I even look at him. Did you try playing him the flute? No, of course I didn't try playing him the flute. <sighs> Why don't you come down here and try playing him the flute? Every time I even move, he lunges at me and snarls. I could not possibly bring the flute to my lips without him having me for lunch. <sighs> well, it seems that you are not brave enough to deserve the money. Never mind then, just get into the bucket and I'll haul you back up. What did you say? He said, it seems that you're not brave enough to deserve the money. Let's get into the bucket and she'll haul you back up. Not brave enough? You heard me, not brave enough. Now get into the bucket and I'll haul you up. Hey, I am a soldier. I have fought in thousands of battles. I've never been told I wasn't brave enough for something before. I'll have one more go with the flute. There is no flute in here. Old witch, what flute? There is no flute in the bucket. Ah, oh, I must have forgotten it. I'll throw it down the well, but I suspect you are too stupid to play it. So I will play it from up here. This is excellent. As long as the old hag continues playing the flute, the dog will remain asleep and I will remain safe. Well, this is the most amazing of all. The old woman wasn't joking. There's more gold here than I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to fill the bucket with it. Old lady, why is the flute stopped playing? The dog is attacking me. Old lady, the dog is attacking me. Why is the flute stopped playing? Hey, old lady, what are you doing? Sorry, I was watching a cat video on TikTok. I'll start the music again. Concentrate. If the dog gets him, he won't bring your tinder box back. That was close. But never mind. I'm still safe. Old woman, I'm ready. Call me up. Do you have the tinder box this time? No, I forgot again. You're a triple idiot. Get out of the bucket and get it. I'm not hauling you up until you have the tinder box. But the dog's right in front of it. I can't get it without being ripped to shreds. Huh? <sighs> you are worse than a triple idiot. I will calm the dog down with the flute. Just get the tinder box. Okay, old hag, I will try. I am at the tinder box, but it's very heavy. I can't move it. Never mind get it in the bucket. Ah, uh, I thought that might happen. Now who's not strong enough to lift a flea? Never mind, I will help you. Tinder box, tinder box, please let the spell help us to haul you up out of the well. Chant with me, come on. Me? Okay. Tinder box, tinder box, please let the spell help us to haul you up out of the well. Tinder box, tinder box, please let the spell 
Help us to haul you up out of the well. Well, that worked. But who are all the other voices? I don't know. There's no one else here. Get back up here so we can go home. This is all really creepy. Never mind. Old woman, I'm ready. Haul me up. Do you have the tinderbox this time? Yes, old lady. I have the tinderbox. The old lady started to haul him up, complaining all the while about the weight, because the bucket now contained Anders the gold coins and the tinner box. She tugged and she tugged on the handle, forcing it round and round. Several times she slipped and Anders found himself suddenly going down instead of up. Eventually, panting very heavily, she succeeded in getting the bucket back to the surface. Well, old witch, you were right. There was a dog in front of a cupboard, but he calmed down when you played the flute. And when I got the doors open, there was more gold in there than I could possibly bring back to the surface. I'm most grateful for this money, and if it's quite all right with you, I'll be on my way. Yes, let's go home. Well, at least this time you bought the tinderbox. Ah, oh, yes, it's here. Just before I give it to you, though, I wish to know what you will do with it. Do with it? That is none of your business. It belonged to my grandmother and now it belongs to me. I insist. Tell me what you intend to do with it. I insist equally that it is none of your business. In that case, I will chop off your heads. What? <coughs> what are you doing? Shut up. She's just a creepy witch. And we're both rich now. Just don't tell anyone where the money came from. I don't want any of the money or that tin the box. It's probably cursed. I just want to get away from here. Christian ran off into the forest back towards the town, leaving everything behind him. Anders carefully picked up his heavy knapsack full of gold coins and the tinderbox and set off home. He struggled on through the forest with his load, load until he eventually reached his village, where he bought a large house and filled with fine furniture. The hag had been right. He had become rich beyond his wildest dreams, and he no longer needed to work. He left the army, put his knapsack uh, and sword away forever, and started to live like a gentleman. He even employed a servant to look after him. Well, this is a fine life. I had to work quite hard for my wealth at the bottom of that well, but at least I can enjoy the results of my bravery. My life is very comfortable now, much easier than when I was a soldier. It's a shame I've lost my touch with Christian, though. I wish we were still friends. Come in. Master, master, I heard a rumour in the market today. A rumour? In the market? What sort of rumour? About the royal family, sir. A, a rumour that the princess is, is to marry a soldier. A soldier who shall then become king. And that's why she's being kept locked 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 in the castle. A soldier who shall become king? And what does that have to do with her being kept locked up in a castle? So that she won't meet a soldier. Master, if she's, if she's locked in the ca castle, she won't meet anyone, let alone a common soldier. That way the soldier can't, can't become king. That's all very well, but we can't not have a future king. I've been lucky in my life before, so why not this time too? I will woo the princess myself. Servant, I want you to take a scarf of the finest silk. Present it to the king and ask for the princess's hand in marriage on my behalf. Yes, master. I should go right away, master. Go on, quickly. Off with you. Yes, sir. A soldier to become king? Well, that would suit me very well. That was very quick indeed. So, was my proposal accepted? What did the king say? When is the wedding? Master, master, your scarf was thrown back at me. I never got as far as making a proposal. I tell you, no one's allowed to see the princess, no one at all, certainly not a soldier. Well, obviously, you didn't try hard enough. Go back to the castle, this time with a scarf spun of the finest silver. Present it to the king and ask for the princess's hand in marriage on my behalf. Yes, master, I should go right away, master. Go on, quickly, off with you.
The first gift was not expensive enough, but I'm sure this one will do the trick. That was very quick too. So, was my proposal accepted? What did the king say? When is the wedding? Master, master, your scarf was for back at me. I never got as far as making a proposal. I tell you, no one's allowed to see the princess. No one at all, and certainly not a soldier. Well, obviously, you didn't try hard enough this time either. Go back to the castle, this time with a scarf spun of the finest gold. Present it to the king and ask for the princess's hand in marriage on my behalf. Yes, master, I should go right away, master. Go on, quickly, off with you. Surely the king will not turn down a scarf of the finest gold. Very quick once again. So, was my proposal accepted this time? What did the king say? When is the wedding? Master, master, your scarf threw back at me. I never got as far as making a proposal. I tell you, no one's allowed to see the princess. No one at all, and certainly not a soldier. Well, this is very sad. Perhaps my money can't buy me everything I want after all. And you have a visitor, sir. A visitor? Show them in. Christian, my old friend. It has been a long time. I heard you, you were doing well for yourself, so I thought I would come to see you. Well, I'm not doing too well at the moment. I have all these nice things and a nice house, but I want to marry the princess, and it seems no amount of money can buy me that. So what are you going to do? I don't know. Give it all to charity. It's not like it's making me happy. Perhaps I'll be happy if I share it. And bit by bit, Anders started to give his money away. He was... First to his friend, then, then to the charity, then to this beggar, then to that beggar. And before too long, it had become known in the neighborhood that if you wanted some money, you simply had to go to the soldiers and you'd virtually help yourself. Well, I've just got an empty house now. Perhaps I'll sell that to you or give it to someone else. I don't understand. Why have you given everything away? It wasn't making me happy. And are you happy now? Not yet, but now I can start a new life. How? You've lost everything. I haven't actually lost everything. Look, I've still got that tinderbox that I got from the, the well. The one the old hag wanted. The hag whose head you cut off when she wouldn't give it to you. The tinderbox, that's probably cursed. Yes, that one. I've never actually opened it. So, before someone takes that too, I'll find out what's inside it. I don't want any part of this. Ever since you went down that well, it's like you've gone completely mad. I'm not going to hang around here and get cursed. Fine, I'll open it. I'm not afraid of any curse. What do you wish, Master? The fiercest of the dogs. The style is anything. Talking to me... Am I dreaming? What do you wish, Master? What do you mean, what do I wish? Master, you do know, don't you, that the tinderbox is enchanted. As long as you keep it open, your every wish shall be granted. As long as I keep it open, my every wish shall be granted? Yes, Master. As long as you keep the tinderbox open, your every wish shall be granted. So that's why the old lady wanted the tinderbox. Well, in that case, what I want is a bag of gold pieces. Bring me a bag of gold pieces. Well, now that I see it, I do not actually want a mere bag of gold pieces. I want a large sack of gold pieces. Bring me a large bag of gold pieces. Well, now that I see a large bag of gold pieces, I see that this is also not actually what I want. What I want is a huge bag of gold pieces. Bring me a huge bag of gold pieces. This really is something. I have enough gold for now. And there's no point burying myself in it if I can get more anytime I want just by opening the tinderbox. Now, dog, can you get all my furniture back? I don't mind buying it back. I can just use this gold.
I have my old life back. This is everything I wished for. But why am I not happy? This wealth is all very well, and the tinderbox can bring me anything I want, but it hasn't brought me any happiness, and the princess is still locked away in the castle. I wonder, I wonder. Suppose the tinderbox could bring me the princess herself. I wonder. Let me try. I'll open the tinderbox again. What do you wish, master? I wish to see the princess who is locked up in the castle. Bring her to me. Yes, master. You fool! That is not the princess. That is an old hag that I killed years ago at a well in the forest. How have you brought me her when I asked you to bring me the princess? And how have you brought me her altogether? She's dead. You have brought me a ghost. Take her away this instant and return with the princess. Yes, master. You double fool! Did you not listen to what I said? That's not the princess. Take the old lady away and return only when you have the princess with you. You triple fool. Did you not hear what I said the first time or the second time? This is not the princess. Take her away or I'll cut your head off also. Do not send me away so quickly. There are many things you do not understand about the world. And one of them is that appearances sometimes can betray the truth. You have heard the prophecy about the princess marrying a soldier and the soldier becoming king. If you are the soldier, then I am the princess. How can that be? I was indeed once a soldier, but surely you are not a princess. And I cut off your head. Aren't you dead? I was indeed once a princess, just as surely as you were once a soldier. But in order for me to prove that to you, you must come back into the forest with me and visit the well again. Visit the well again? I don't understand. Stop thinking you need to understand everything. Just do as I say. Come back into the forest with me and visit the well again. Anders was rather reluctant to go back into the forest with the hag because he was sure he had carved her head all those years ago. But deciding that he had little to lose, he followed her into the forest. Further and further they went, deeper and deeper into the forest, until he became quite scared that he'd never find his way out. Eventually, after walking for what seemed like hours, they arrived at the well, the same well where he had first come across the hag. Well, here we are again. Now what? Now I will lower you down, and then I will lower myself down, and we shall see what we shall see. Are you sure this is a good idea? I have no comb, no bone, no flutes. What if the dogs chew me to death? You have the tinderbox, don't you? At least for now? Yes, I suppose I do. Well, there you are. Nothing to worry about. And what do I do when I get down there? Nothing. You just wait for me. Is that understood? And so Anders reluctantly got into the bucket and let the old witch lower him into the well. Now, as we already know, the well was very deep, very deep indeed. And once again, he began to wonder whether it had a bottom at all. Down and down he went, lower and lower and lower. So low, in fact, that it began to get very dark and very cold. It was even darker than the last time. So dark, the only way he could tell that he was at the bottom of the at the bottom was because he felt the bucket go bump. He could hear though that is the time there was no not one dog, but there are three dogs, all smacking their lips at at the prospect of the tasty meal. After he had got out of the bucket he called out to the hag, who raised it up to the surface again. She got she she then got it and lowered herself down. It's awfully dark down here. I can't see anything. 
Ouch! That was my foot you trod on. Sorry, didn't see you. Ouch! That was my foot you trod on. Sorry. Oi, can we have some light down here? Phew, that's better. Wait, how did you do that? Never you mind. Now, you must use the tinderbox for one last time and wish yourself free of it. Because although it can give you anything in the world you desire, it is a curse with which no man can be truly happy. Wish myself free of the tinderbox? Yes, wish yourself free of the tinderbox. How do I do that? Just wish yourself free of the tinderbox. Are you sure about this? Yes, I'm sure about this. Just do it. Okay, all right then, I'll do it. I wish myself free of the tinderbox. My, my dear, I feel as if I have suddenly awoken from a long sleep during which I had the most amazing dream. A dream in which I was a dog, but it ended with our elder daughter being delivered back to us. How odd. How odd. I also as if I've suddenly awoken from a long sleep in two, which I dreamt I was a dog. I have had a similar dream. That's how I was a dog. Those were no dreams, father. Ah, Kirsten, wasn't it a dream? What are we doing in this strange place? No, father, it wasn't a dream. I am returned to you by the hand of this man who will be my husband. You? Wait, aren't you the one who sent me those scarves of silver and gold? And you are a soldier? Yes, your majesty. It was I who sent you the scarves, and I was a soldier. But since then, I made a fortune. I would be happy to marry the princess. A soldier to marry my daughter? Kirsten, are you sure? Father, I am sure. Hmm. Many years ago, there was a prophecy that my daughter would marry a soldier who would become king, a prophecy which I refused to believe. But now, now I see that you have brought my elder daughter back to me. I understand. Her return to us gives me more joy than I can express, and I will happily allow you to marry her and become my heir. Wait, what about me? I'm the one who's supposed to be getting married. Why can't I marry this rich soldier? You? Huh. You might have to wait until it's your turn. For the moment, these two will live happily ever after.